Jano, Cedric and uh, me did practice sessions, um, JD was watching and um, over the weeks it just uh, set lap times and at the end of the weeks JD made a decision that it's going to be Jano and me. Sam has really proved himself his determination, his pace that he's shown and I think he was pretty much the quicker driver um, almost out of everyone for this event so I think he's earned his place and it was simply because of pace and consistency and he deserved his spots. Starting point is the same, the pace is very good, pace is good enough for the top or one of the top steps, it's just about delivering it when it counts and uh, I think I can do it today. I'm not going to treat this event different than any other just because we're fighting for the championship. I just wanted to try and win all three races and get as much points for the team as possible. All five lights are on. We're racing at Suzuka. Who's going to get a good start? It's reasonable from Caratoni. Comes off to cover Freddy Rasmus and Lucas Blakely trying to get the inside of Tanitza down into turn one and two, but he can't quite get it done. So for this race, we decided to go with a very audacious strategy, pitting that one with Yano. Uh, the soft last of the entire race. Uh, it was quite a big risk because we're rear reliant on the cars ahead battling each other uh, to get a really big undercut. And yeah, for this race it worked pretty much perfectly. But the soft tyres were going to last uh, the whole race. So we decided to start on mediums. I took two people at the start, uh, went from P10 to P8, pitted uh, lap one to softs. Obviously I didn't have a grip of the new medium runners, but we set up the car like that, that it will be balanced uh, throughout the whole race in the car. The balance would get better and better over time. Then I got held in the pits for two or three seconds, and then Tormelan got me back, uh, so I lost one position. But the outlaps both me and Tormala did were really fast. Um, and then I overtook Tormala in lap four or five. Frederick Rasmussen wins in Suzuka. A really strong drive. And he has hauled himself back into championship contention, closing in on David Tanitza, who can only finish fourth. To come P6 is an amazing, amazing result. And then Simon did the same strategy, pit a lap later, uh, to come home in P10. So I think we've got big points on our rivals, actually extended the gap to the people behind. Uh, still in the fight with Ferrari, Red Bull had a good day, but no, very, very perfect first result, so. All five lights are on. And eventually, after quite a long hold, we're racing in Austin. Decent getaway from Freddy Rasmussen. The Alfa Romeo is coming with him. Look at Tanitza. I started P6, uh, made a move in lap one, ended up in P5, cracked very comfortably. The Vigang is going up the inside in the Renault, trying to get past Brendan Lee, and he's done it. And Brendan Lee's on the grass, coming back onto the circuit. Tires were fine, decided to pit a lap three to undercut one or two people, which would have, been, would have worked. So he might have ended up in podium places after the pit stop, but the game decided, or let's say, yeah, the game decided uh, that in some way, I mean, I didn't change it, but uh, the second strategy was selected by default, which usually never happens. But in this case, it happens. We didn't realize we're on the se se second strategy, which put me on the hard tire, and the hard tire is undrivable. He lo loses you about seven tenths a lap or even more. I went for the alternate strategy, which is uh, starting on mediums, going very long into the race, and then basically do qualifying laps uh, for three or four laps in the end. Uh, and it worked out really well. I had a huge pace advantage in the, in the last three, four laps. Here comes Jano Opmir, all over the back of Alvaro Caraton, up into turn 20. Does he fancy the move there? He's got so much more grip on the exit of the corners, doesn't he? He's close enough to try the attack. He's doing perfectly. Try it, try it, you're close. He did it. <laughs> up the inside goes Jano up here in the Renault into sixth place. He's got so much more grip than those around him, but how far can he progress? He's seven tenths behind Hungarian Daniel Berezhne. 
to the two row. Oh, almost touching the back of the Alfa Romeo. Now maybe up the double left-hander. Oh, great move. Whoa! What an aggressive move. That is fantastic. He's the driver of the day. Here comes Jano Watmir behind Brendan Lee. Into turn 12. He's got to oh, go for it all. Oh, Lee gets over and covers the inside just about. Goes in a little bit deep. Oh! Otmir now to the outside. Can't quite get through around there. He went up the inside into this double left a few laps ago. Does he try the same Ooh. move? He does. Lee sees it coming and the two have a little bit oh! of a nudge. <laughs> Another one! Another one! It's a quite popular overtaking spot on the inside there because you need to go really wide to get a good exit. Uh, and I tried it uh, the laps before on Dani, um, Barisne, and uh, last lap I tried it on Davide as well. Uh, that didn't work out, but he had a penalty anyway, so I moved up one, one position. A little bit of a think about it, but not quite close enough. Jano Watmir there in fourth place will try and get past the Ferrari driver. Looks to the outside as he comes up to the double left where he's had so much success in the past. Does Tanisa oh, cover yeah. it? He, he doesn't, oh. and they can't quite get it done this time. Jana Watmir for the third time in a row trying to get through. Freddy Rasmussen across the line to seal the team's championship for the Red Bull team with those results. Benito in second, Otmir in third in the end. I think I sealed uh, P3 in the Drivers' Championship as well now. Uh, now we just need to try and get P2 in the Constructors' Championship. Honestly, that's a low blow. Because it's so silly, it would have been easy. Top five, let's say. Even though driving was good, we, it still hurts because it's just stupid. But now we're going to refocus on this. Final race of the 2019 F1 New Balance Esports Pro Series. It's a long hold and it's underway. Tanitza gets away nicely, moves over towards the inside to cover off Daniel Berezne. The Brazil qualifying was special because we only had one run to do, um, just because the rain came after five minutes. And obviously you know, cannot you know, extract any more lap time after the track is wet. So everyone had one run, unfortunately Jano didn't get a good run in. Mine was okay, good enough for P6. His run was good enough for P16. I started in turn two, uh, I got hit, which uh, made me drop to 20th place. Uh, then I decided to pit on lap one and try and undercut as many people. I came out and, or I didn't came out, but eventually uh, I ended up in P11. But I was two seconds behind uh, the leaders group. And uh, they were slipstreaming and deer rushing each other, uh, so I couldn't catch them. And the 2019 title for David Tanitza. Berezne wins the race, Tanitza is the champion. We just finished the competition now. Um, obviously, Renault Vitality ended up P4, um, which is not the result we hoped you know, um, going into the last event, but overall it's, um, it's a good season. It's been a tough ending, you know, because we were like 27 or 26 points ahead of, you know, Alfa Romeo. They had a very good quality, they've been looking quality, they've been having a good race as well. Uh, P1, P4, very good race from them and we've been, you know, not performant enough, so we need to, we need to work on it. Uh, we. I think we're losing by four points, something. Um, we, we, could have, we could have done better, we could have done worse this year, so yeah, we need to work hard and, and go back stronger. It's a long term project, obviously. So we're back in Enstone. Uh, F1 Esports uh, season 2019 is over. Uh, I'm about to head in the F1 simulator for a three hour session. Um, the purpose of this session is going to be uh, learning new things and uh, try and improve my driving skills a little bit as well.
unbelievable. Two seconds in front of everyone. Yeah? yeah, I think this has been one of the strongest performances in the history of F1 Esports here today. Jano up there, out across the line to take victory in Hockenheim. And it looks as though, in a very impressive performance, uh, Simon Weigang is going to get points on his first Esports race. What a move of me! Two cars at the same break. He was just perfect the inside there eh? because he break deep on the inside. He took the position and then he could use the extra grip. I think we are frustrated with the fourth place because we know we have the pace to win this. And at one event we showed our true potential. That's probably why we are so frustrated. But yeah, a big improvement from last year. And we're still proud to have finished it high with so many points. And this is just a positive to take into next year. At the end we can still be proud. Just because of the, the delta between P10 and P4 is huge. It's not, it's not a given to, to have that, such a leap in one year. It was obviously the first year. We all were mixed into this and had to work together, which we did. And it's amazing that we um, worked well together and achieved this. We are all rookies um, and be, be fighting for the championship, which we legitimately did, is, is amazing. It's all their debut season. They've all got the talent to be the best in the world. They've proved that. Um, and I think this is why this is only the beginning of our team, our journey. I think we just have to keep up what we're doing right now. Just focus more on uh, being more relaxed before the sessions, not being too stressed out. Um, relax a bit more. And yeah, just, just going into detail more. I think pace-wise we all are fast enough to compete at the top level. Um, it's just about delivering from event to event consistent enough being at the top all the time. Yeah, and then I think we can be a contender for next year.